What is going on, guys? We are back with another realistic side rebuild. I'm out of 22, and today it is of the Buffalo Bills, a team that, of course, were favorites going on into the later portion of the season and looked really, really unstoppable and solid. Of course, they fell short just barely, and they're obviously a team that you would expect to kind of repeat that same situation, maybe even make the Super Bowl this upcoming season. But the reason why you can still say they need a rebuild is because, A, they added a couple of new talents, of course, and B, you almost never see them, maybe not even almost, maybe physically never see them win a Super Bowl in Madden Sim. Hell, a lot of the times, they're like 6-11 and 11 to start the season. Of course, a team that obviously does have a lot of talent, specifically in real life, but in Madden, you are looking at some team, you know, some players that need to be developed. And also, some players that are just simply old. Of course, wide receivers, I think we're fine with Diggs obviously being the number one. Still young enough. He'll be here for the whole thing. Gabriel Davis, a lot of potential. He looked pretty decent uh, in the postseason last year, of course. They hope to see a huge improvement uh, during the regular season, next season, obviously. But for us, looks good to be that guy. As far as Josh Allen goes, obviously... Just the insane turnaround. He literally is the total package at this point, and he's just so much fun to watch with his running ability. Actual tank. Of course, Devin Singletary, a solid player, but doesn't really have that long uh, range running ability and not a super great threat out the backfield. They drafted James Cook, obviously, to probably do that for them. Maybe even becomes the number one running back for us. Of course, Dalton Knox finally showing off that potential, and obviously in Madden, Looks really, really good. O-line, though, I will say, we definitely need to work on the O-line. We could use a right guard. We could use a right tackle. We could use a left guard. Honestly, we could probably use everything but left tackle. <laughs> it's really not a great situation for Madden, at least. In real life, I think you can get away with it. But defensively, Kair Elam, a very solid uh, draft pick, especially considering that's their biggest defensive uh, kind of shortcoming. Obviously, for us in this one, the safeties are going to be a little bit of a problem, specifically Poyer, because, once again, he's like 29, 30. He's 30 years old at star dev. That's like a one-year situation. Uh, Micah Hyde's probably not much longer as he's also 30, but he's at least superstar. You could probably even argue Poyer deserves to be superstar, but that is a huge game-changing force where if I put him at superstar, that adds years to his uh, you know life <laughs> lifespan. He's gonna die once he leaves the NFL, but you know into his career. So I'm not gonna do that. But Matt Milano, a very solid linebacker. Uh, Tremaine Edmonds, decent, of course. Uh, obviously gonna be the main guy we want to develop in general. Uh, Bernard, I believe the third round linebacker. He's okay. I don't know what that 23 years of age starting point that he's gonna be. You know the long term option for us, but. Long term, speaking of, Von Miller, that six year contract, which does kind of translate to at least three years guaranteed, uh, which I think you can get away with, what, 36 years old? I mean, it is kind of crazy. I don't know what, like, why it took so much to get him there. Like, maybe I'm missing something. Maybe it's because, like, the, the TV deal is coming up or something. Like, but Von Miller, I wouldn't say he's overpaid, but considering his age and the length of the guarantees. It kind of feels like an overpay almost. Obviously, for us, it's not going to be a big, big deal because he should still be very usable. Just, uh, you know, he'll end up retiring before that contract is up. I don't know. Maybe I just don't know the logistics of it properly in real life. But from what I looked at the contracts, it seems very hard for him to play up to that contract for the kind of time period they're expecting him. To, they, they seem like they, they're they expecting him to be good till he's like 36, 37, which is... Kind of crazy, right? But, of course, Tredavious White is a freak. And, yeah, I mean, we got great special teamers around here as well. I mean, it's just a good time. And speaking of good times, I would have an even better time if maybe you thought about leaving a like, maybe subscribing. Those things are free. You know, they're very free. If you're not new, I really appreciate your continued support, whether you're actually subscribed, whether you, you know, watch all the videos, you leave a comment, you don't leave a comment. You know, I mean, you aren't subscribed, whatever. Really means a ton that you have decided to spend your evening with me uh, on this hour-long journey. It's probably at least an hour long, right? It's My editing and talking skills are, you know, a little bit uh, laxed. So looking at re-signings, I'm going to have to uh, you know, make sure that uh, none of these guys actually have real contracts. I don't imagine the O.J. Howard contract would have been a one-year type thing. Uh, so we'll see 
Crowder as well. I got to make sure, you know, we're not uh, we're not cheating here by getting rid of some of these contracts that I probably won't want to keep. Never mind. They uh, apparently can sign every player ever to a one-year deal. There's no way it's going to happen. There's no way it's going to happen, right? Six in the la- I'm telling you, dude. It's li- I don't know what it is. It is scripted to hell for this team to do to go six and eleven. I didn't force any wins. I didn't force any losses. Like losing to the Steelers probably shouldn't happen. Definitely shouldn't happen. Absolutely shouldn't happen. Fair enough. I guess maybe. Sure. Suppose. Maybe. Possibly. Maybe. I guess. No shots. That's three no shots. Maybe four. That should be ten wins at least. Of course, I did uh, go to the Bills playbook. However, the wh- the thing that makes this you know more peculiar is that I actually did change the playbook a few times. I changed it with the Bears for four weeks. We lost three games out of four. Uh, then I went back to this scheme, the exact scheme with the you know the spread or what was it? I don't even remember what. I think it was West Coast Power, whatever the hell it was. Didn't work. Went to vertical zone because that seemingly works well. Put Cincinnati's defense on because that kind of has done well for me. I might go with Cleveland next, I think. Uh, and nothing worked. We still went 6-11 and like I quote-unquote joked. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say joked technically because I have seen this team go 6-11 and a lot in year one. But that's like without the rookies as well. So I don't know what the hell is wrong with this team, but they're literally bugged out. They're actually bugged, which is why I felt like it's fair to do a rebuild. I might even do the Chargers, because once again, they're a team that has immense talent, and you never seen them win a Super Bowl. But regardless, see if we had any redeeming qualities of a season. Absolutely horrendous for Josh Allen, which is just not close to what he's like in real life. James Cook, the backup, outperformed Singletary, which doesn't happen in Sim often. Singletary is going to be benched. Uh, The two receivers were all right. Crowder was decent. Knox was actually all right. Blocking was absolutely horrendous defensively. Tremaine Edmonds might go to superstar. And Oliver was pretty decent. Rosu was pretty decent. Or Russo. Von Miller was actually pretty bad. Nine sacks for the money money we're giving him is kind of iffy. Uh, Tredavious White with six sacks. Bass was okay considering two of his three misses were blocked. Ariza was pretty damn good. McKenzie was decent. I can't imagine we would have won any awards uh, unless I'm forgetting something. Like, like oh yeah, Rosu, uh, Russo, technically. Uh, of course, also Trey White's. I mean, we got a couple of awards, but once again, an absolutely pitiful season. A complete waste of a season as well. I didn't go with a real-life class, even though I probably should have, because I expected the team to do okay. And I figure in these rebuilds, you're going to have... Uh, CPU classes no matter what anyways, so I kind of want to mix it up with the CPU class right out the gate regardless as the Packers Steelers Super Bowl rematch is even more one-sided this time. But I suppose let's take a look at any DevOps offensively. I don't think there was a single chance for that to happen and I I mean I don't know if there was or not but it, it didn't happen which is the same thing and defensively oh hold up actually there's some names uh Ed Oliver, Ros- uh, Russo, I keep calling him Rosu uh, Edmonds and Milano. What did Milano do that... I mean, I think this team actually has him contracted pretty long anyway, so I'm, I guess I'm cool with it, but... What do you... Oh, not this. I didn't mean edit. I want to take a look at the stats and awards. I want to see what he did. Like, Edmonds had a bunch of tackles, and he was actually pretty decent, but... Did Milano actually do anything? Of course, Ed Oliver. We know uh, Russo, who I almost called Rosu again. Uh, obviously, had like a double-digit sack season, kind of expected, but... Let's take a look at Milano, who I was finally trying to get to. He had... Yeah, I don't get it. Is it just because he's an outside linebacker? Maybe his ask is not as much as, like, other positions, perhaps? I don't know, but I guess we have a lot of rebuilds where, like, nothing positive happens and we have a bad year, but we did actually have some positives. So, in fairness, there's there's something to be had for the season, right? Like, there's still an L because we wasted a season of having a pretty good roster, but we did get a bunch of dev ups, and we went up in overall a decent bit of positions that matter the most. But I think I'm going to try to go even more. (laughs) The thing is, I normally would trade down in a situation like this where we don't have a clear-cut number one need, and we're a team that is, of course, kind of uh, needing multiple things. Ooh, that's a pretty good upgrade, actually. Uh, But overall, 
I do want to trade down, but at the same time, I kind of want to get more realistic, maybe going forward, where, you know, if you're a team that has, like, edge rusher need and there's a clear-cut god edge rusher in the top 10, you have a top 10 pick, just to take them rather than trade down. The trade down's smarter, but it's not realistic, right? Like, we know you can get decent value later in the first, but... In real life, you got to try to go with those scouts that are considered the can't-miss prospects, right? So we'll see if there's anything like that, especially for something we need. But other than that, assuming we do have our first-round picks, which I can't really remember the Bills doing a whole lot of trading anytime recently. Uh, I think we will. I just looked. We're going to be drafting four overall as the Buffalo Bills. Oh, my. I did recently talk about it, too, where I was like, should we automatically force lose teams that are supposed to be bad but somehow win in sim? I imagine that goes for vice versa when we're talking about it, and you guys pretty much said, just let it happen, that's what makes it fun, which I kind of do agree, like, what's even the point of playing video games if all the outcomes are set in stone? Once again, Tom Brady have been letting go to free agency lately because there's a good chance that he goes to, you know, announcing uh, next season, so kind of do that just to let him have a decision rather than force him to play. Ronnie Harrison would be a decent choice, but... I mean, he actually is an okay fit, but need a little more athleticism than that, probably. Uh, as far as anything else in free agency, I don't imagine there's going to be anyone here for us that can be starter caliber, for the value at least. Sauce, okay, dude. I'm pretty sure, I thought all the rookies had at least a three-year, but I guess not. I can't believe a one-year seven for Akeem Hicks is considered, like... A low ball. Like, I mean, I guess it's kind of a low ball, but it's considered, like, disrespectful. It's like, relax, dude. Calm down. You joined the Buccaneers for pennies because the league is rigged. Oh, Saffold retires. I wondering, like, where the hell our left guard was. So, yeah, like I said, I mean, this is a team that is a fair candidate for a rebuild. And I think we're seeing that now with some of the overall drops, some of the uh, retirements, some of the just players that aren't great in general, you know? So... I don't feel too bad about it. And pick four, man. I think we got to trade down. I Like, I just don't see any other option. Of course, we did actually get Akeem Hicks, which is pretty big. I don't know if he really fits this scheme per se. But when healthy, he is just such an actual freak. So, I'm just going to say screw it, dude. He's gonna We're going to make it work with him at DT2. Also allows us to hold off at least another season on drafting DT if we want to, which... I'm not saying I want to, but I almost feel like the need to at this point. The corners seem fine. Safeties, we definitely need a safety or two. Uh, quarterback is obviously fine, even though he played really badly for us. O-line, it's pretty much the trenches. Oh, come on, I, it's too early to be dealing with fifth-year options. The answer is yes, but the answer is no. It's quicker to say no than it is to say yes and no, so I just, you know. So it's a What? We have to actually give up a fourth round. I was about to say, it's a little bit kind of sucky against us but pick four davis and 100 for 29 and 14 this round this year of course we weren't actually in the draft there but i mean now we are obviously a quarterback to the giants wide receiver to the texans quarterback to the lions jets go with corner that guy was actually insanely good he just was a little slow for my liking didn't really need corner, so I was like, unless it's an absolute goon, I'm not going to make that play, right? Like, unless they're absolutely can't miss God tier, which, I mean, he is, but he's not that fast. You know, why would I do it, you know? The Eagles are actually kind of giving me what I want here. 22, 74, I can maybe use 74 and 106 to trade up my 29th pick. And they go Dion McCoy. That's a pretty decent pick as well, ironically enough. Wow, he went that high! Jones went 17th. He was a 1-2. to two? Unless it's not the guy I think it is, but I'm almost a billion percent sure it is. It was? Wow. Uh, this guy also looked kind of decent, right? So uh, I suppose we're going to make a play for him. He's a 1-2, to two, though. Maybe the other guy was round one. I don't know. Let's just, let's just move on. Screw it, dude. If he's there, he's there. He's not, he's not. I, I say that, but I would actually be literally dead if he wasn't, which he's thankful he is. Might trade up with the Chargers as well for a lineman. But this left end is going to be my choice. He's going to be a future DT for us. Uh, a block shed, a power move, a tackle. He is a freak. I was debating on going him and Jones, though, so it's kind of like, eh. But 
Armin Adams, normal dev. Yeah, I mean, you already knew it was going to happen, right? Like, he just can't be that good potentials and be hidden. It's just kind of against the law. You just know how these things go. Yes, I know I traded with the Jets, but I don't care. We've seen even crazier trades in real life for even higher picks than what we did. Eh, maybe not for higher picks, but it is what it is. Okay, stop yelling. You traded again, uh, you know, 29, 106, and 164 for 23, which I think is going to be a left tackle, I, th I think. I think it's going to be a left tackle. We could use many lineman positions, and uh, this left tackle looked pretty athletic, if I can remember correctly. He was pretty athletic, but he does have that F run block, which does scare me a tiny bit. But, I mean, I suppose what player doesn't have their, like, shortcomings? Run block F. This team doesn't run the ball that crazy well. I mean, we were pretty trash at it last season. I guess it'll continue if we grab Samuel. I'm going to risk it on him. And he's hidden, which... I know it's become a lot more common, but when you have an F on a player, them still being hidden is still like, whew, thank God, you know? It's still kind of like, I wasn't quite sure, but thankfully it was. We get 46 and 110 off of Seattle for pick four, which is a pretty big jump for uh, us, you know, in the later rounds. And with this pick, I think I'm going to end up grabbing the safety Blair, I think his name was. And it was J.J. Blair. Not super convincing, but 6'3", 21 years old. Just athletic enough. And he's got some, you know, redeeming factors. You know, decent hit power, good pursuit. Uh, C zone coverage isn't terrible. That could be like 68 or something that worse. But we're going to take the chance on him. And he is hidden development trade. That kind of type of player seems to be a decent pick most of the time. So, I mean, I'm not mad with it. And now I think we're going to go until either Tom Holiday or George Young is gone. And then we'll trade up for one of them as well. And that didn't take a whole lot of time as Tom Holiday's gone. We'll be trading up for a center. I suppose if I was going to bet on one, the center position is usually a position I like to, uh, you know, I like my odds on. So we're going to move up with 110 using 68 as well to get there. You know, we're getting a little bit further into the round. So it's, you know, kind of more expected that you know, it takes a little bit less to get up. To where we want to go but let us grab mr george young potential new center in the future maybe a starting guard right now that reps i will say his strength sucks but he has enough redeeming qualities with everything else that i'm gonna take him hoping for the best thankfully he's hidden 84 strength is usable he's very fast he's kind of just like a flyer <laughs> at the offensive lineman position of course which is a very common phrase obviously so we pick 10 in the third round. Uh, oh, I thought we would have had a little bit more depth, but I know we've made some trade-ups, and that has obviously factored quite a bit. He's a little undersized, but this guy did give me vibes of the other guy we just grabbed. I know, once again, undersized, a little bit shorter, but gives me vibes. I don't know if he could really replace two safeties the same year anyways. So I, I don't even know if the guy we just drafted is going to start regardless, so I'm not going to make that choice. Vikings give us a late third and late fourth for that pick, which I'm cool with. I might even reach if I like one of the day three guys. And you know what? I really like this Ricardo Chisel guy. He's pretty fast, good catching, and he's six foot two. So we're going to grab him. Normal development trade, 92 speed. And, you know, if you're going to have one of the athletics as the highest, speed obviously is the one. Jumping kind of sucks. Your direction's not great, but 6'2", 22. I mean, even if he's in the 70s, I'd say that's probably worth it. Let's go to pick 21 in the fourth round. See if that lineman's still there. He looks, I mean, he looks like he could be hidden. I feel like a lot of the linemen could be, but, he can, you know, would I really believe in him? Probably not, but bracket, eh, I mean, kind of slower. Bunch of Bs. Actually, I do think he's going to be hidden. Yeah, I, I, it, you look more at him and you're like, yeah, he's actually pretty hidden-like and... I don't know what his size was, but he kind of feels like a center with how, you know, non-athletic he is. I had a wide receiver, but that wide receiver is gone, unfortunately. You have this guy is kind of like uh, the guy we drafted earlier. So, once again, almost guaranteed to be normal dev. And then you have this guy who had a B block shed. Pure DT type, undrafted projection, which, I mean, where could that be? That could literally be like the seventh round. I don't know who I like more, because, once again, I don't have the power move and I feel like the DTs here are a little bit more supposed to be a little bit more power move rather than just pure block shed but you know I'm actually gonna take small I know he's undrafted projection but B block shed with that strength we already have a weaker DN DT type this guy is a pure tank 
and Lee's will have that position in the future uh, if he's any good, obviously. Normal development trait, 89 strength. I don't know. I, I can't tell. Also, do we even have a fullback? I'm probably just going to grab a fullback in the seventh. See, I don't know what an A catching means for a fullback. Like, doesn't that just compare to other fullbacks anyways? Ooh, A run block. Now, that's a stat that I don't care about when it, you know, if you're carrying... If you're comparing across the board, that's that's a stat that's good to have A on. And they were actually all 23, so I suppose we'll go Chambers just because he's got the highest run block, right? And let's see how we did, and let's take a look at that other... Uh, I think there was a DT and a corner that I wanted to see. The guy that the Jets actually traded up for, I'm kind of curious about. They lost Sauce, and they're like, we need a corner again? Uh, left end, he was a high overall, Samuel, thankfully, we, I mean, that overall does kind of scare me, but 74 there, 70, 71, 69, 71, 70, so a couple of below 70s, but overall, some pretty good draft picks, obviously, this guy's kind of a freak, 77 power move, 80 block shed with that kind of speed at his size is, is kind of absurd, we've, we kind of drafted another Ed Oliver, which is... Pretty clutch, actually. I kind of wish we didn't have Akeem Hicks now, but that's beside the point. We'll find a spot as a backup for him. Mark Samuel, uh, left tackle is not the biggest need. How athletic is he? He could probably play guard more than anything, actually. So uh, we'll take a look at all that in a second. J.J. Blair, he'll be the new starting strong safety. Well, I mean, maybe not right this moment, but next season he'll be the new starting strong safety. He'll be backup for this year. Kind of curious the dev. We'll take a look real quick. His dev was superstar. Okay, that's a dub. We didn't check the the tackle, but that's a huge win, actually. George Young, 6'4", 293. He is weaker, so definitely on the interior. And then Brackett was slow as hell. Yeah, he's got to play tackle. So this is our new starting strong safety. Uh, I think someone may have to sit. Actually, Cody Ford's not that good. I think all these guys are going to start. This guy will stay at right tackle. Uh, Young will probably play right guard, and then Samuel will just play left guard, and we'll just move it around if we need to be. Maybe next season, perhaps. See what a dev is for the center. Star dev. It would be actually kind of clutch if Samuel was superstar. He's going to be our left guard for this season. Going forward, maybe once again, everyone changes. Who knows? And he was not. And I think those were the only hiddens, right? Like, we didn't have any other hiddens, I believe. Yeah, pretty sure that was the only hit-ins. But let's also take a look at Chisholm, who was, uh, of course, very fast. 70 catching, 72 man. He's okay. Oh, yeah, Chambers. Let's take a, not Chambers. Um, Timmy Small, 77 block shed, 70 power. That's pretty good. It's pretty good, actually. And then I guess we'll look at Chambers since we're here. 23 with 72 run block. Yeah, he's a solid fullback, actually. But let's take a look at the couple of the players we missed out on. The corner. Which, once again, it wasn't a big need for us, but yeah, Oscar Triplett. They weren't going to make that play without trading up. What was that, 85? 85 catching. Oh, my God. Wide receiver, question mark? Holy crap. That's actually kind of insane. Superstar Debbie. I mean, it's a good trade-up for them. They landed themselves, uh, you know, kind of like a Sauce Gardner guy. I don't know who that even is, but, you know, kind of someone like him. Uh, Jarek Jones, he was normal in fairness, but also... Very good. 83 power move, 78 block shed. It's not common that you see a guy with that kind of power move and that kind of block shed as one player. And even though it's like super far away, I really do want to take a look at the DN we could have had instead of the DT we took. If I remember his name at least. I think it was, was it Willis? Wait, did he go undrafted? What's the story? I don't know. He went a little bit uh, more recently than I thought. 70 overall, uh, pretty athletic. 75 power move, 69 block shed. Yeah, he's a different type of player. I don't think you can really go wrong with either one. So for year two, uh, Cook is going to be the starting running back as he was literally better as a backup than Singletary was as a starter. We're also going to rock the Minnesota playbook as, of course, they have Cook. They have Diggs. <laughs> it's the new Vikings. Uh, let's see. Dawson Knox is like Irv Smith, but like actually good. Uh, O-line isn't like the greatest. I mean, I'm getting Minnesota Vikings offense vibes, except for a quarterback that can actually throw it far and, and win games. Uh, but <laughs> look at the defense. Obviously there's some things that you would like to improve linebacker here. We do have Adams ready to go to replace Hicks. Uh, but outside of that, and maybe one more safety, we're actually still pretty good. Worried a little bit about Von Miller regressing, but 
maybe we force him to not regress so hard next. I'm just, you know, hey, I'm just, I'm just throwing out ideas. Just, you know, throwing some feelers out there. Someone also tell Rosu, uh, Russo, I'm done. I'm done. Russo that he's a pass rusher, not a freaking block shedder. He's going to be playing DT for us next year. Well, this is kind of clutch. We're going to go with rushing the passer. So uh, Russo actually has like basically 81, 82 on both styles. Well, both styles being power rush and block shedding. Both facets, I should say. Here it is. The rare one out of like every 30 or so attempts at a camp standout. And we get the first one of two at least. Is he goaded or not? Ah, he's still pretty good though. He's still pretty good. So we have re-signings and we have a couple of big names here. Three I'm seeing so far with the number one unreplaceable guy actually being Dawson Knox considering the position he plays. It is a very tough position to draft for. He hasn't played that outstandingly well, but I think a three-year uh, or a five-year 50 with that being 10 per is absolutely fair. Ed Oliver, I don't know what kind of season he's having, but he is still kind of an iffy pass rusher, and that's kind of what we want. So I'd probably give him like a six-year 75 to be fair, but uh, outside, oh, hey, relax. Can we, can we, no, I want to, that gets a little exciting for me. Can we, can we just get it to 75? But yeah, six-year 75 isn't terribly high. It's not terribly low. I would love that kind of money. I'll just put it that way. And then Edmonds, who is like the number one middle linebacker on the team. I think we're going to give another six-year 75 out. As far as everyone else goes, probably gone. No Hicks, obviously. Well, I wouldn't say obviously, but most likely. Obviously no Poyer. Obviously no Singletary. Sorry, he's a decent player in real life, but in game, the small players just never work out for some reason. He just hates them. I think it's just because the game kind of prioritizes speed with size versus just speed with... Well, he's not even fast in general, but, but you know, opposed to just elusiveness. So I just got a pretty busted upgrade for Kair Elam. A plus two to speed for a 93 speed corner. That's not at all broken. Headed to the playoffs, and let me tell you, not a bad year at all as we end up going 12-5, and five, finishing a very long win streak with the exact same playbook all the way through. And, yeah, I mean, well, actually, no, we lost the Lions. But outside of that, a very nice win streak of, what, six games? Six wins out of seven games with that Minnesota playbook, which I honestly don't remember ever using. If it's going to be based on the way Kirk plays real life, I can't imagine there's going to be a lot of touchdowns here. Really didn't give you much of a chance to look, but if it really matters too much, you just turn it on point. 2-5 playback speed, whatever. And yeah, like I said, it's going to be another really bad season for the quarterback. And even the running back. What is wrong with this team, dude? What do we... I mean, we went 12-5, and five, but like, what do we do to get better numbers? Of course, left tackle. Linemen were a little bit better outside of the rookie right tackle. Uh, Edmonds pretty good. Maybe an X-factor. Russo with 11.5. Vaughn with 11. The DTs were awful picks. Some okay numbers there. Bass, not great. Matariza, even better than last year. Yeah, I mean, I just don't understand how the team's playing so badly with so many great individual players. 17th on offense with 8th on defense, which is okay, but it really didn't feel like we were even that good on either. And I mean, neither number is really crazy high. Of course, Jarek Jones is the MVP on defense for rookies. Uh, Chisselman, number 4. Wow, I mean, nice rookie season we had there. Not even close. Number 10. I'm honestly surprised he's even there. Not on the list for running back. Wide receiver number one. But that's basically the only award we would have been even close to. Uh, anything else? Like maybe DB perhaps. But like it's just. It was such a bad year again. Just somehow we were able to win and go 12-5. and five. Like do we just go with like the Buccaneers playbook again or something like that? I don't want to keep doing that but. It's kind of like feeling like the only option. We only have one overall up on the Miami Dolphins. It would be really a shame if we lost this game, but it's kind of looking that way. It's 14-3, to 14-6, 21-6. Can we put up some points? Thank you. But then they give up a touchdown. Defense is doing really, really poorly as well. This is a team that probably should be putting up more points on offense, but also getting crushed on defense 
This Bills team is just so bad in Madden Sim. I don't know what it is, but Josh Allen was awful. I guess we're going to have to change the scheme again because clearly everything we've done has just not worked. Josh Allen is literally, I think, with his abilities and his build, probably the best quarterback in Madden, yet he is playing like literal Kirk Cousins. Like, realistically, if you look at the way he's built, look at the way the team's built, you can almost say that we probably should be having the actual Chiefs playbook on, but we know if we do that, then the game will just be too easy and then it'll just be over. But, I mean, what do we do, you know? I can't stick with the same crap playbooks when we have good players not performing their normal selves or like their normal selves. Like, the Bills losing in the wild card round? Like, really? I mean, I get the Dolphins are an improved team, but you can see we're in 87 across the board, you know? But of course, uh, you have the Rams and the Bengals with the rematch winner being the Bengals this time. Impressive. Although it doesn't show it there. I mean, cool, I guess. But I suppose we do have some dev ups to take a look at. I don't remember the offense being uh, very good. So yeah, they didn't get a dev up defensively, maybe. Uh, I don't remember. I, this is another day I'm recording this, but I'm pretty sure the linebackers were both superstar. Yeah, X Factor for Tremaine, and we have got to replace Milano. Is because even though he's developed X Factor, you know, superstar dev to X Factor wise, he's still really, really low of an overall. But Rousseau, superstar development trait. Von Miller, I worry about that regression, but we'll allow it to have an 88 overall. Still fine enough. 34 years old. Still pretty damn good, actually, and yeah, we're probably going to lose the safeties. Blair's going to come in, though, and, uh, you know, be a great help to us right out the gate, and yeah, I mean, we have lots to replace, but I'm really worried about the actual good players we have on the team more than the positions we need to replace, honestly, because once again, we're underperforming. We're honestly broke as hell, so I'm letting guys like Akeem Hicks go, Poyer, Mitch Morse, couple of other names maybe were uh, pretty big in there, but we're broke. We're kind of broke, so do what I can to keep the team cheap. And with that being said, it's it's going to be linemen that we have to replace more than anything in that sense. But I think it's fine because we can replace just a center. That's all we have to do. But wide receivers, I think, are good enough. Running back, James Cook should be good enough. I don't know how, unless we grab a proven guy, we can do much better than James Cook already. So, I mean, we're going to have to just stick it out there. And then defensively, we could definitely use a linebacker as uh, Bernard here is 25 and he's a pretty low overall still. We obviously need to replace Milano. Free safety, Micah Hyde's still here. I don't know what his cost is, but, you know, we don't really save too much getting rid of him. And he's just good enough still. So, I suppose two linebackers and a safety and a center. Two linebackers, safety, center, and we're back on uh, track all right, free agency, probably not something we're going to be spending money in, uh, but Lamar Jackson, Terry McLaurin, Rashawn Gary, Kareem Hunt, you know, that is the, kind of that proven running back, but that's just not a big need. Well, I mean, it's not a big need. It's just not a smart call, I think. Tom Brady's still around. Uh, Montez Sweat, that's kind of a future thing. Devin McSingletary, we obviously let go. Uh, I mean, Jonah Williams, but he's not really built to play anywhere else. You know, tackle's probably his spot, and... We just don't need a tackle. Jordan Poyer's free agency, but we don't really need him anymore. Keem Hicks would be kind of cool again to have back, but unless he takes a one-year four, which I will offer, uh, I don't think I'm bringing him back. Sean Murphy Bunting would be a nice number three, but not necessary. But once again, I'm willing to offer low-ball deals. We are a team that is proven, so I'm allowed to kind of get away with these three-year 15 kind of underpaying contracts. For one, they don't have to accept. And, you know, these guys, you know, some of these guys will get other offers most likely. So they don't have to accept. So I, I'm kind of living on that pretext that, uh, or pretense that, you know, they can choose where they want to go. But if they choose us, I'm not going to feel bad about it. Well, I've uh, proven the game's broken again. I didn't, like, obviously I would love to have Rashawn Gary, but I will be releasing him because I just wanted to check how bad the game was and it's still very bad i offered him a seven year 80 million dollar deal with zero dollars guaranteed zero he's getting paid 20 minimum in free agency if he's a 90 plus overall which would signify that he's you know continuing to play like he just showed in real life last season like how yay are you still so bad at that like really
get them, but you know, if one year four for a really old guy chasing a ring, ha, no shot. Sean Murphy bunting, ha, no way, dude. But of course, he will, you know, he'll join. Jesus, man. Hey, we got Akeem Hicks. Not bad. One year four. We probably should be using Adams anyways, but uh, we'll see. I mean, I don't even remember his ratings, but a one year four is affordable. It's great depth anyway. So maybe Adams will still start, but we'll we'll see when uh, you know the season's actually starting. All right, we're going to go to our pick, which is pick 23, and we're probably just going to grab a linebacker. There's a guy that looks pretty clear-cut talented, uh, kind of near the uh, top of the draft. Yeah, I figured he would still be there. Uh, but Jorvante, which is an interesting name, Finney, very fast. You know, he's got the A-hit power. He's got decent, you know, coverage and whatnot. We're expecting a 70-something overall. What I'm hoping for is a hidden, and we do get one. So hidden development rate, great speed, great excel, decent agility, pretty rough change of direction and jumping, but those are ratings you pretty much always get cucked over on. And then for next round, I think I'm going to go with a safety. Uh, we could use another linebacker, and there's a guy named Cruz that looks pretty decent. We may even reach into next year's draft picks uh, to grab some players. But safety, how many are there left? One. It's just Taft. Okay, well, that was uh, a little little scary. Um, don't know a whole lot about him. He was the worst of the bunch, which kind of scares me because he's the last one left. But he's 6'4", 21 years old with insane speed. The main factor is that he's 21, though, so I'm going to risk it, and this guy could actually be insane. White guy with 90 jumping is already nuts the way it is, but 91 in uh, speed, 90 excel, uh, hidden, and he's 21. So, unless his overall is really high, I, I think we probably will still start Micah Hyde, but that's pretty crazy. Back-to-back -back good safety picks, well, you know, back-to-back -back years, if you will, uh, of course, linemen, we obviously need still one guy. I think I had two linemen, right? I have a... Do I, oh, do I not? I only have Klein, who's a day three, who's also iffy, if I must add, but he was literally the best option. You have three Bs and a D, but I'm telling you, everything else was awful. As you can see, we're not far into this thing. Yeah, you see this guy, and he's also got really bad physicals. Uh, as far as center goes, you know, there's real. I mean, there's already day three. That's where we're at. 25 bench reps. I mean, these guys are really bad. They, like, other than tackle, it was a really bad. Like, this guy actually looks decent, Joseph Daly, but he's 6'8". Like, what am I supposed to do with a 6'8 guy? He's also a little weak, if we're going to be honest, but, like, what am I supposed to do with that? I can't put him at center. So this could be an overtrade, but 119, a 6 this year, and a third next year. Obviously, 68 is... A super reach, unless I'm like I'm missing something. This was like some other team's pick. Four pick sixty-seven this year, which will be most likely Cruz, the other linebacker that we had on the list, which looked you know he looked pretty decent as well. We also have Travis Reynolds, but if I'm gonna be honest, I'm gonna probably say he's pretty bad as a pure coverage guy. So uh, Miguel Cruz, a little bit raw than our guy that we had. I did not say raw, I promise. And now, now I did, but. He is uh, insanely fast, even faster than our guy, and we're hoping for another hidden, which we get. Literally just as good as our other guy on the uh, athleticism front, but just slightly better. And then at 23, I think I may take Klein. I think I'm inclined to do it. I can't want to say it. Uh, and thankfully he is there. I, I expected him to be, but no guarantees. And I think no matter what, he's just our center, simply put. And he's hidden! Okay, I mean... Is that the perfect draft? I I'm just going to say it. I think it may be. Let's go to the start of the fifth, see if there's any of our day threes left. Because once again, day three can mean anything. Uh, that running back looked really good, but I imagine he'll be gone. And they're all gone. Nice. Atlanta's offering a fourth next year. I'm going to take it because it's a late fifth. And we already made a bunch of trade ups. And we're already missing that third next year. And based on the way we played this year, unless the Tampa Bay playbook does that much for us, we're probably going to need another year anyways. We're going to grab a backup running back, Michael Wilkinson. He's got a B-Bray tackle, and, I mean, not the slowest guy in the world, but we'll see. 88, wow, that is, I mean, that is barely NFL athleticism, like, literally barely. He's a little bit bigger, maybe. It's really decent, but, I mean, that's that's a rough one. What do guys draft recap? Let's take a look at the overall. 73, 74, 70, 68 for the guard is going to be center, but... 
Of course, Finney will most likely start. I think we're going to move on from uh, Milano, if I'm going to be honest. I think Finney's going to start. And let's see if we made a right call with this start decision. As uh, Well, I mean, no matter, no, no matter what, he's going to start. But we'll, um, you know. Well, I mean. Wow. Okay. Uh, we've seen for a while uh, that... You know, there are a lot of X-Factor middle linebackers, but we really haven't drafted those. I should have put them in outside linebacker. So, Bernard is going to be either replaced or, uh, you know, it's going to be Milano. We'll, we'll decide there. Let's take a look at Mr. Taft. Yo! That may be the... Is this the first time this year that we drafted two X-Factors in the same class? Cruz, I have to make a decision on now because... <laughs> I mean, we're kind of on a bit of a roll here. Um, I think Milano's going to play one more season. I'll, I'll put it that way. Milano's going to play one more season no matter what. Uh, this guy will be playing, I'd say, right out in the future. Star. Okay, I mean, you can't you know, you know, can't get lucky forever, but wow. Uh, I kind of want to say what the other safeties were like because, like I said, Taft was my last choice because he looked... I mean, as far as a user goes, I would absolutely have taken him probably first because of how young and fast he is and his height, but... As far as, like, a rebuild goes, he was probably the most raw-looking. We had a bunch of safeties, if I can remember their names. Mitchell was one of them. 77 overall hit in 5-9, but wow. Absolutely high of an overall. That's kind of insane, but you can't beat X-Factor as a rookie. Two of them. It's crazy. Uh, start of element trade. Nowhere near as good as our guy, obviously. Uh, what else do we have? Paxson was one of them as well. 70. Wow. I actually had Paxton higher on my list. I may have still went with our guy just because of the age, but that's a bit of an L. Taft. Wait, was there not? I thought there was three. I thought there was a guy named, like, Swede or something. Pretty sure there was a guy named Swede, unless he went late in the first. No, that's not him. I guess maybe not. Okay, well, I mean, last choice, first by a mile in talent. It's really sucky because I've already made the commitment that we're going to be starting uh, Micah Hyde. But that's a huge L for him not to start year one. But regardless, it's it's okay because he'll still develop really fast even as a backup. Season three, technically. Uh, the squad, new center. Everything else, literally the same. Of course, technically the running backs get worse. But new scheme, James C Cook might have a chance to be a god. I did not almost say James Conner. It just sounded like that. Uh, linebackers, I mean, there's a lot of red. I like it. I mean, Finney's also an X-Factor. He's just, people just don't know that yet. Of course, Taft's going to be an X-Factor. Well, technically, once again, is Adams. I decide to actually start as he's still pretty young. But if he doesn't get a start on soon, he's going to be a wasted pick. So I don't want that to happen. Hicks will be the backup. He'll get snaps. He'll play a part. Once again, one. it's technically a one-year 3.67 rather than one-year four. But, you know, it's still a cheap deal no matter how you look at it. And I suppose coverage is probably the best thing for him, but field general is, you know, the scheme fit. Got to keep that speed upgrade as well, which is pretty clutch. Putting him at 88 speed. I mean, he's kind of a beast. Man coverage sucks, but outside of that, which I suppose is pretty big if you got sick man coverage for a linebacker that's kind of busted. We had an awful start to the year, but then we kind of turned it around. Of course, seeing some bigger names in free agency here, two names that are massive a five-year deal at 29 years old is kind of harsh i'm gonna maybe compare this to maybe Devonte adams's contract in real life and uh say that he's like a little notch below him god damn they paid him a five-year 140 i want to do something like a four-year like 100 i gave him a four-year 104 million dollar deal which would come out to about 26 per which I think is pretty fair. Like, don't get me wrong, he had a killer season last year, but he is on the decline comparatively. Let's take a look at Gabriel Davis now. I think 10 per would actually be pretty fair. He's actually on the increase this season, so I think it's kind of time to lock him up to a four-year 48 right now. Give him the deal. Slap it on. Be happy with it. Micah Hyde, sorry. Hicks, sorry. Bass, I think, has been a little inconsistent, to be honest, but let's take a look. Uh, 8 for 10, 12 for 16. I mean, not great, but, like, can you really do much better than him anyways? I don't know. I'm just going to give him a three-year deal worth, like, $14 million, I guess. 
Uh, anyone else? Epinesa never really had a chance to develop. Not a bad backup, but yeah, I think we could do better. Zach Moss, no thank you. And then Bernard, do we actually have to pay? I feel like he'd be on the team for one more year, right? Just probably forgot to actually, uh, you know, give him that extra year. Yeah, we did. If we win, we have the division. And we do win. Of course, actually, it didn't matter because the, uh, the Jets lost anyways. But the Chargers again. Just beat them, and now we have to play them again. Of course, we rocked with the uh, Buccaneers playbook this year, and I was like, what is wrong with this team? Because we were 1-4, and four, and then we turned it around without changing anything. I don't know. Well, who do we have to play, actually, at the gate? So the Jets, I don't know how we lose them to them, even though they're kind of okay now. Broncos, they're not really that great in game right now. Dolphins, we got smoked by in the playoffs. Eagles, fair enough. Raiders, I guess. I mean, it is a team with a pretty rough-looking schedule, it seems, so... I guess, but we are a really good team with a damn good quarterback, so it's a little disappointing when we don't put up those crazy numbers. Which, speaking of, good touch on a pick ratio, but touchdowns are lacking a little bit. And that's what I was kind of hoping for is the, the running game kind of stole some of them, which they did. No rushing touchdowns for Josh Allen, though. I guess when you run a Tom Brady uh, playbook, uh, you don't get rushing touchdowns. James Cook, though, better yards per carry, better everything. Shakir, 1,000 yards on the dot with Stephon Diggs. Looking pretty decent, and Gabriel Davis maybe just enough to get Superstar. And then Dawson Knox, not bad for a tight end. O-line, we've seen a lot worse at left guard spot, though. Kind of a lot of sacks allowed. Finney, the X-Factor, really good stuff. Sacks, Von Miller with 17.5. Russo with 12.5. Ed Oliver with 11. And Adams looking like trash, to be honest. But Kyrie Elam with 5 interceptions. A couple of picks for everyone else, but nothing crazy. He was uh, number one by far. And Bass, the guy that we paid the three-year 15 to, working out perfectly. Ariza, 54 yards per punt, which is really good. I normally don't look at punting numbers, but I want to see. That's got to be like top five for yards per punt, surely. Surely it's top five. One, two, three, four. Number four with what was inside the 20. He was number two for that. Touchback on the punts. He was number three. I mean, one of the best punters in the league, apparently. So we'll take some sort of win. A win is a win, no matter what the position. Uh, MVP goes to Trey Lance. Let's take a look if we had any. Dang it, come on. Uh, any awards, Josh Allen? Maybe Defensive Player of the Year? No, Vaughn with that many sacks was at fifth. It's kind of crazy. Rookie awards, Finney at number two, surprisingly. Josh Allen, number one at quarterback. Rushing, not even on the list, even with those touchdowns. Receivers at number two and six. O-line, uh, not on the list, sadly. D-line, number 3, 9, and 10. Linebacker, not on the list. DB, number 3. Kicker at number 5. The Jets had two kickers. Uh, I kind of need to see what's going on here. Let's, let's take a look. Okay, dude. Did he actually win kicker of the year, by the way? Was he number 2 or number 1? Don't tell me they gave him the kicker of the year with freaking one kick. What a disaster. Regardless, though, back in the playoffs. Lost in the wild card round last year. In the wild card round, you know, card round again. They do have a very good team. So if we lose, I guess I accept it, but I'm not going to be happy about it. Going to the end of the game, huge rushing touchdown to start for the Chargers. That is not a team that you should be giving up huge rushing touchdowns to. I'm just sorry. Uh, Ten all... It's close game so far. They get three. We get nothing. They score nothing before half, thankfully. But right now, as with last year, the struggles on offense continue. Defense definitely improving, though, as they've locked them down to only 13, now 20 points. And with a little bit of time left, they ran the ball. They only need a field goal. So, I mean, this team is actually so good. I, I honestly don't. Did they just waste their last time out? Was the clock even running? Wait a minute, what? Oh, the clock was running, wasn't it? They need to got a bounce. I mean, there's so many good players. I don't even know how to use her. I guess at Oliver, because he's likely to be doubled or tripled. I'm still going to play, though, because obviously I need to you know, give it some effort. And a really good find. Obviously, we're protecting the end zone a bit, but that is field goal range, without a doubt. I'm not going to block it. I don't know if the AI can even block kicks without your help if you're actually playing, but... Regardless, I'm not going to actually attempt the block. I mean, I'd probably believe in the AI to do a better job anyways, so I'm just going to uh, witness the situation, if you will. It's not an easy kick. Under pressure. 
and no good by an inch. It was literally like three feet. It might have been a little bit more than that. My depth and perception is awful at times. I, I really can't tell, but it was close. I mean, a little bit more. Oh my god, it wasn't a little bit more. That is harsh. Oh my god, dude. It literally was like right there. Wow. Okay, a literal football length. That's pretty harsh, but you know what it means? We're moving on to the next round. That's all that we care about. Everything was fair. There was nothing. You know, I'm kind of like uh, Chris Angel, if you remember him. And he's like, is that fair? Everybody is fair? Even though literally everyone next to him was a paid actor, which was kind of hilarious. Eckler with a nice run long, but as far as yards per carry goes, I'd give it to James Cook because he didn't break one for that many yards. He just was consistent. Gabriel Davis, great. Dawson Knox, great. Everyone else, not so great. Defensively, Vaughn Miller is just a Super Bowl winner. He's just a guy that wins Super Bowls, simply put. It was weird. I'm pretty sure. I don't know if it was just like taken out of context or if he even said it, but kind of weird is seeing that I'm pretty sure he was recently in the news for saying he would have joined the Cowboys for cheaper. It's like, bro, you're, you're technically locked in for three minimum years with the new team. And you're talking about, well, I mean, I would have joined another team. It's like, well, bro, of course, Von Miller, I would, in my experience, say that he probably is a little bit better of a finesse guy and he is in the scheme fit for finesse. So going to go with finesse or speed rusher wow that's a nice upgrade plus three that's really good for a guy at his age <laughs> me when i'm able to walk for f 10 steps every five minutes taft who's got 83 zone coverage hasn't even started a single game yet could this be the end i'm not sure if i want to do multiple seasons uh the chiefs oof could this be the end, though, or nearing the end? 90 overall now, going up against the Chiefs, and we win this game, I mean, we kind of feel indestructible. But I'm going to be honest. If I had $1,000 that I had to spend on betting on one of the teams, I'm betting for the Chiefs, without a doubt. Even if you could change their scheme to our scheme, I'd still bet on them. Uh, but obviously, we do know the Chiefs scheme is pretty busted, and so far, it's looking that way. But 7-13, halftime. The defense is doing kind of all they can when it literally looks like the offense is handed away possessions 24-7. What a drive. No two-point, though. Now down nine. Back down by two. This is a hell of a resilient bunch. Can the defense get a stop, though? They can. Five-point deficit with three minutes left. We know between these two, the problem is scoring too quickly. But this time, taking our time and getting no two-point conversion, though. I mean, literally one play, and they're already down the field. I mean, like, what can you do? Here it is again. Just like last week. Little bit easier of a field goal, but still not guaranteed. Could you imagine? Two fail two-point conversions, which, if you know math like I do, that means it would have been a win or, you know, overtime. And, of course, on the left hash, it's almost guaranteed to go in. But you do have Josh Allen. Could he throw a Hail Mary for the win? I'm just saying. But I will say, it's kind of looking like we don't have to worry about uh, trying to go for back-to-back -back or three. We'll be lucky to get one Super Bowl in five years, apparently. 75 yards for Josh Allen to at least have a chance. Oh, my God. That is kind of crazy, though. I get he has insane throw power, but Bazooka, nothing like that was active. And he almost hit the end zone. Allen throwing a pick. And more importantly, as with the whole playoffs so far, incompletions. Just too many incompletions. 51% completion percentage. Ground game, James Cook was actually decent. Just didn't get enough carries receiving. Uh, I mean, looking at our guys, Gabriel Davis was the number one. Diggs was okay, but... We need touchdowns, and we're just not getting them. Von Miller literally put up a double-digit sack season in the postseason, pretty much. Like, he's actually insane. Will he still be here next season, though? I don't know. And honestly, he kind of seems like he's just going to be elite for life. I'm probably going to boost his ratings if he drops too far. I, I mean, I kind of have to. Von Miller is one of those talents that you can kind of maybe argue would never kind of, well, maybe not never, but you know what I mean. 
would deserve the uh, the repair, if you will. Of course, losing to the team that goes to the Super Bowl. Real big shocker. Another Super Bowl rematch we're seeing here with the Chiefs winning it all. Let's take a look at the devs. Gabriel Davis. Cook. Okay, so we do get Davis, but no Cook, unfortunately. But it's still a dub. Defensively, any dub. I mean, I mean, who even? Oh, Elam, actually. I was about to say, who even really needs a dev up? But Kyrie Elam. Fair enough. He has a five-year deal, of course, because we can't do the fifth-year option. So I pretty much have to give a five-year to, you know, the first-round guys. But Hicks will be gone. Adams, I think, is good enough to just start. Uh, I don't know if we need to really replace him. He didn't really have that good of a year, though. So if there's somebody there, maybe. Of course, Milano will be gone. Taft will be the starter for uh, Micah Hyde. The team's good, dude. I don't know what else to tell you. The team's good. What we need to replace, I mean, maybe look for a wide receiver because Diggs isn't going to last forever, but we did just give him a four-year deal. O-line looks great. This team is just underperforming. I will say there's a couple of guys that, you know, are developing now into solid starters that still just need maybe another year, but still, I feel like we should have probably made the championship, maybe the Super Bowl by now. All right, about $30 million cap space. I'm not really thinking any guy... Coming up soon needs a contract. I mean, it's probably like Kyrie and maybe James Cook right now, but no one crazy. Uh, obviously, there's some names that can improve us, but long-term-wise, I don't know if any of these guys are the answer. Interior, though, Mike Onwenu or Jensen could be kind of clutch. Kind of feeling it, to be honest. Jamison Williams, still normal development right there, which is just, I don't really want to deal with that, but... Uh, Michael Unwenu is a better long-term, you know, situation, but do I really want to pay someone long-term? Of course, he's a god-tier interior guy. I mean, the money is not bad. What kind of, like, it's about 10 per. Puts him above Washington. I mean, you gotta pay linemen no matter what. At least you're getting a really high overall with this guy, I suppose. So, screw it. Put some more money in the O-line. Oh, that's an L. We lost on Wenu. We paid him a good money, you know, a bit of money. Got to the division around. I mean, what else could we really do? And sadly, outside of Tyron, that's that's it. So, best of luck, I guess. JC Treader is still here. Our center Klein is kind of not great. I'd be willing to do a one-year six. Start him over Klein. Klein can learn behind him. Boom, maybe. So, I cleared another, like... 15-ish mil by releasing Taron Johnson and who the hell was it? Matt Milano. Uh, but we do probably need to replace those positions now. Edge rusher is probably the position we should be looking at next as uh, Von Miller is literally going to be gone like next season pretty much. Still really good. I'm not going to change his ratings. I don't want people to cry about it and he still should be good without the changing of ratings. Uh, but corner maybe for the future is Trey White. He's about you know, 29. He's not the youngest guy in the world. And we could use a third string guy. So maybe in the fourth round we grab someone. But we're kind of in an amazing spot. DT if there's someone really good. But it's really just edge. I think edge is the number one position we'll need. It was the cheapest we could do. But 27 and 93 next year. And a fourth this year for 20 from the Chargers. Which will hopefully land us either the defensive end or DT that we like. Uh, as they both look pretty good. I have no idea if they're going to be there. But they're both one of two. So I imagine at least one is going to be there. I just didn't want to click manually. And yeah, they're both there. The corner's even there. Uh, yeah, I mean, so it's going to be between uh, McAllister. Who looks obviously very good. And we need that edge rush for the future. Or the DT... Langford, who also looked pretty damn decent, uh, you know, 476, 40 reps. Only know the B power move, but still really good. But unfortunately, we're not really unfortunately, but obviously, considering team need as well, McAllister is the answer without a doubt. And hidden development trait with 87 speed, 89 excel, and 85 strength. 6-3 is a little on the shorter side, I guess, but... He kind of looks like a god. We might end up going double McAllister, to be honest, that other corner. It looked okay. We need a new number three, technically. It could develop into better. Uh, our next pick is in the fourth, like the late fourth. So, not really a whole lot to work with there. But Clarence McAllister with a C-man B catch. 6'2", 21 years old, and very athletic. Uh, we also do have J.D. Bullock, who I believe was pretty fast. An A catch in traffic. 
another positional need, especially for the future. But you also do have another guy, a wide receiver named Malcolm Gates. A little bit raw, but once again, insanely fast. What was the height and weight of this wide receiver, though? 5'11", 192. I mean, corner is technically the more immediate need. So I think just because of that alone, I'm going to go with Clarence McAllister, who is normal to have, but outside of the jumping, is very good with athleticism. We'll definitely have to take a look at the other guy, though, to see, you know, did we sell or not. Bullock went to the Chiefs, so you automatically know that he's a god. Great. Gates is still there. So is the right tackle. I think you trade up. I just don't know who you trade up for. Lineman is always nice to have, but an F run block. But everything else looks great. I think that's a guaranteed hidden. I'm going to be honest with you. And with the fact that I just said I think it's a guaranteed hidden, you go with the guarantee every time. Although I said I think it's guaranteed. So <laughs> it's kind of uh, oxymoronic, but sure. Let's see if the Bears are a quantity team. And they are. We give them a 6 and a 7 for... Uh, uh, 97 with, obviously, our late fourth. Adding to the talent pool a, once again, probable hidden development trait. Yep, there it is. Hidden development trait lineman, not bad. And, I mean, he's not really guaranteed, but I really do kind of want that wide receiver, though. That's a lot to ask for to trade up again in the fourth. You know, it's a fifth round, maybe, but we are kind of asking for a lot here, aren't we? A fifth, sixth. That's too steep, I think. I don't think they're going to accept that. We would be down to a first, second, and a fifth next year, though. Whatever, dude. I mean, this wide receiver is super fast. I, th I think he's going to be a good pick. Malcolm Gates. Let's take a look at him. Super fast. Normal dev. Like I said, insanely fast. Jumping sucks, but everything else is blazing. 21 years old. 5'9", 189. Really good. Really good stuff. And I think I'm going to go to the seventh round if that running back's still there. Because he's okay in speed, I might grab him just because we really have nobody <laughs> sitting right now that looks good at backup. We do have a little bit of cap space, though, I think. So we may just grab, like, a proven running back. He's kind of on the older side. Maybe looking for a ring. And he's gone. Running back. He was decently fast, but kind of thought maybe he'd still be there because he was undrafted, projected. But... Oh, well, let's go on to see the uh, the actual goodness of our players. Yep, I said it, how good our players are, and uh, I do want to see that wide receiver we passed on. I suppose the DT as well, but, I mean, it pretty clear cut from the draft process that the guy we took was the right call, right? 76 overall, 70, 69, 72. Not looking at cornerbacks overall, but here's McAllister, the future right end of the Buffalo Bills, the successor to Mr. Von Miller. Let's take a look at the dev up. I mean, I'm thinking superstar. Let's take a look. Ooh, really? Only star. He's still a really good player, obviously, but little bit of an L. Mini L. Clarence McAllister. Uh, very raw, but decent press. I mean, he's... I think it's a bad pick. I'll put it that way, but still. And then this guy, he's a bit raw, I suppose, but, you know, Deion Dawkins, I think, needs a contract. If we don't want to pay him, could always use this guy instead. Take a look at his dev just for the fun of it and start of element trade as expected. And then the wide receiver, Gates, who's actually not a bad overall for, you know, kind of a slot project. Insane catch of traffic, okay catching, solid short to medium route, okay release. And once again, insanely fast. Probably going to be our kick returner until we decide what to do. And actually, it'll probably be our number three automatically and then see if we ever do anything more with him, though. But. Let's take a look at Langford. 22 normal development trait. Of course, insane potential, but not really looking for potential. I'm looking for, you know, star power right now. Uh, and then wide receiver Bullock, 72 overall. Uh, only normal, so we actually dodged a Bullock. Yep. My running back went late fifth. He was undrafted projected. Of course, he does look pretty solid, but... Really? That's kind of crazy. Now, I'm not trying to ruin anything, but, uh, you know, if we're going to foreshadow what's going to happen here, uh, I mean, it seems like we're probably going to win the Super Bowl this year. Obviously, we've been super underperforming, but based on roster talent, the fact that we're an 88 overall pre-morale boost, pre, well, season, if you will, you know, you're going to have James Cook go up in overall, Gabriel Davis will keep going up in overall, the O-line outside of, like, center left tackle will keep going up overall. Obviously, Treader we added for a one-year, was it four again? Uh, Finney will go up way high. So will Taft. Blair will go up. Cruz will go up. Elam will go up. Uh, Rosu will probably, uh, Russo anyway. <laughs> I keep 
doing it. We'll go up most likely. Adams maybe gets a breakout. Like, you know, it's just it's looking like the number one team in the league, but is that enough to win the Super Bowl, though? I, I mean, I don't know. It's him is really kind of hating on us. You're going to laugh at how bad the Sim is in this game when I show you guys the slide we have had on the season. Just because of how bad it is, I'm putting the Chiefs offense on because I don't know what's wrong with this team. They're just they're just underperforming. Uh, Gregory Rousseau, how good has he actually played? Because I don't want to overpay him. Yeah, I mean, he's kind of deserving of at least 20. At least, well, maybe not at least 20, but close to, right? Let's give him like a one-year, a six-year 115, I think, is probably fair. He's played really well, in fairness. But that it also is with Von Miller. So we'll see how he's like without it, uh, without Von. Of course, James Cook has been very average. So a four-year 30, I think, honestly, is fair. He really hasn't been much better than that. He's been pretty average. Uh, Matt Ariza has been pretty decent with his kick power. So give him a four-year 16.6. Uh, what else do we have? Gus Edwards, the backup. You know, he's really played much. Shakir, we have the replacement for. Sorry, buddy. A couple of guys that I really do like, but not going to have a spot on the roster. And obviously, Vaughn will probably retire. Also, he should probably have... I think I made it to where it's kind of like, uh, like I said, a three-year deal. Because that's kind of what I view that contract is. I think it's an at-most four-year deal for Vaughn. So I'm just going to add one more year, I guess. But I don't even think he'll play that long. So we'll see. I'll turn it into a two-year 30, I suppose. I honestly don't know what's wrong with this game. I, I honestly don't understand, dude. I really don't get it. This game is just not good. We go four straight wins. Then look at the season. It was right here where I put the uh, cheese playbook on, but it, it was too little too late, and even then it really wasn't great. I mean, how? Like, how? How are we this bad? Literally the best team in the league, dude. I honestly don't understand. I really don't. Let's take a look at the overalls. Maybe we aren't the best team. I, mean, I don't know, but I would imagine we are. I mean, I, I just don't get it. I don't. 91 overall, 90 was the second highest. The Chiefs, obviously, 94 overall. But guess what? They actually win games, which helps their overall as well. There are three teams that are equal to or higher overall than us. But I don't feel like Trey Lance is as good as Josh Allen is. I'm just going to be honest with you. I don't, I don't think that's going to be the case. Josh Allen is a 90, what, 98 overall with 99 throw power. His accuracies are a little bit lower, I will admit. But still, 90s in the accuracy should be plenty. Uh, Trey Lance is an X factor, but his deep accuracy sucks. Everything else is pretty decent, but his deep accuracy is awful. I don't know what to tell you, dude. I, I really don't know what to tell <laughs> Like, how? How? I don't, I just don't get it. Like, the Jaguars, let's see, the Jaguars, Giants, Vikings. Just to list some names off. Jaguars, Giants, Vikings. What overalls are these guys? Giants, Jaguars, Vikings. Jags are an 87. Giants are an 87. And the Vikings, once again, these are all, uh, well, not all, but most are in the NFC. 86 overall. Uh, I mean, we're going to do one more season, and that's it. Uh, I don't care what happens, whether we make it all the way or we don't. That's it. I mean, this is this has become just an absolute joke of a game. I honestly almost don't even want to do another season, as is. Like, it's it's really pissing me off. It's just so stupid. Vaughn with 25 sacks. Russo with 16 and a half. The interior not really doing too well. Bass, 14 of 16. Matt Horizon, not bad of fairness. Take a look at any award wins outside of Vaughn. I can't imagine there would have been one. Speaking of Vaughn, really? Not on the list at all for MVP. Okay. Uh, we've got Rookie of the Year. We obviously got Defensive Player of the Year. The uh, Linebacker or D Lineman of the Year. And also probably a retirement. I even go cap. Uh, they they extended our contract, but I wouldn't have. I would have, I would have released us because clearly it's the coaching. At this point, it's clearly the coaching. Which, speaking of, just for the hell of it, we're going to hire a new offensive coordinator. Defensive coordinator, I suppose, is fine. And then, uh, obviously, we're not going to fire ourselves. Now, I'm a humble man. I'm an honest man. But I will not be handing millions of dollars away for nothing. Of course, take a look at the DevOps. Uh, there was... I'm trying to think, like, Dawson Knox, if you could actually dev up tight ends from Star to Superstar. 
defensively, and uh, no dev ups, unfortunately. But then again, we have so many high overall devs, anyways. Doesn't really surprise us, regardless. Of course, it also seems like no, actually, it's one week away. I was about to say it seems like Vaughn didn't retire, but gonna be honest, I expect that to change right here, which it doesn't. I suppose he wants that ring with another team. Can he get us it? I mean, he's absolutely killed it. I, I don't know what else this man could do for us. I mean, he's sticking it around for another year on top. He's 36, and he's still a god. He's actually bugged in. I want to look at his stats, not his actual edit card thing. Like, what is his sack numbers with the Bills team? It's got to be like 40, maybe 50, which is just absurd. Is he like the all-time leader at this point? Maybe. Of course, uh, you know, with the Bills, 9, 11, 17 and a half, 25. Actually insane. He's probably really close after those last two seasons on the all-time list outside of, you know, the other guys that are active fighting for that uh, category. But let's take a look real quick. He's third all-time. Third all-time now. Will he ever be number one? Probably not, but he'll be very close. He'll be very close, obviously, but that's absurd. I mean, like, what else can you do if you're him? Once again, you pretty much could have assumed that we're not going to be able to spend any money in free agency, but Aaron Donald, who we've seen was on that active list, Zach Martin, you know, Aaron Jones, could even be enough to put us over the edge, but James Cook is our guy, even though he's playing like crap. Uh, Rondell Moore has some really good names here, but unfortunately we can't really afford anyone, and once again, if not for bad sim, because it's a bad game, you know, we would be in a better spot overall wise even even though we're like a like i said top five team overall wise but we'd be even higher if we could uh actually win games but we're struggling unfortunately but regardless of what happens this is going to be the final season and yeah we don't have a crazy amount of draft picks but i suppose dt1 or dt2 could be replaced linebackers are fine safeties are fine corners are fine i mean it's really just get a new DT2 and maybe look to replace some linemen because we can't afford them, perhaps. But, I mean, I, I don't know what else to say. Corner, maybe, in the first round. Oh, yeah, I forgot we have pick 14. Um, I kind of wanted something around 20. So, I'm going to trade back to 20, finally trading back. Maybe gain, like, a third back if we're lucky. Damn, that is an offer, though. I got to admit, that is an offer. They're divisional. Ah, damn, they didn't give it to us. Um... That's not going to do it, but I'd do another future pick, especially since we're done after this anyways. But even if we weren't, it'd still be a pretty realistic trade, right? Oh, i got to give up a fifth. Two fifths and pick 20, or 14 for 20 and 52, which, eh, it's all right, right? It's not terrible. Uh, what are they going to grab? It is a DT, so, I mean, as long as it's not a quarterback, which, I mean, they don't need one, it's not the worst trade for us. Also, we have pick 14 in the second round. Didn't even think about that, but... Uh, I think the cornerback's going to be our choice. Devon Wheaton, looking pretty decent. A press, B man coverage, 5'11", very, very fast. I think that's a great choice for the future of this cornerback position. Now he's a normal dev, which really sucks, but still not a bad player. And with that knowledge, we're going to be going to the next round. And I'm not sure. I might actually trade down again. We're going to get a late second with a late fourth to move back. Uh, from 14 and then at 20 I think we're going to be grabbing an ET if he's still there Mr. Battle if he's still there which he is Henry Battle he's the last guy I actually scouted B blocks at B finesse pretty good athleticism seems like he could be a good player let's grab him and he's hidden now that is a very surprising uh, thing because DT is probably the most common normal development trait player position you could like get so not uh, not bad at all. And then I think we had a wide receiver. I can't remember how much I scout him. Uh, but let's see. 90%. A catching. It's a little bit of a reach, but I'm just going to get out of the way and take him. Chris Austin. Another normal. If not for the jumping, though, he'd be really good. But he's 21 years old. Normal dev. I mean, it's not terrible. He's 21. Be nice if he was hidden, but still an okay pick. Pulling another Rams. Oh, we didn't even come close to making that trade. Okay, that's fun. I guess this could work. Chris Allman, two-fourths for 65 from Seattle. 
which will be, I think, believe it or not, a running back, actually. Uh, we also did have a tight end, Streeter, who looked pretty good uh, based on his f speed. I mean, not good enough to be grabbing it, I don't think. But Nolan George, on the other hand, A carrying, 6 foot tall, 210. Looks like a pretty damn good player to me. Uh, what about Grant Garland, actually? He's still there. CD. Yeah, he missed. The, he didn't practice or anything like that. But I think Nolan George, even though we could be selling, is going to be our guy. Normal dev. Hopefully he's a good trucking guy. I mean, he seems like he will be, but no guarantees. Not a great draft, to be honest. Not great at all. Of course, that cornerback could be a high overall because... Priest Drafty looked really good, and then the DT is hidden. So we landed some players, but considering, you know, not a whole lot of quantity and kind of not looking like a whole lot of quality based on dev, kind of an L. And I don't even know who the hell our fullback is, but JJ Meredith, it was the best fullback here. So I'm going to grab this guy and I suppose maybe look for a nothing actually in this pick. We're going to trade this down for maybe a six next. Try to recoup some of the losses. Alright, let's see. That cornerback's got to be a decent over like 74 or 76. Actually a really good draft despite a lot of normals. Insane press out the gate. 95 speed is really good. He's 5'11". He's not a bad player at all. 73 overall for the ADT. Uh, I, 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 I kind of want to start him over the guy we have, but I'm not going to. I'm probably just going to let the guy we have go, our number two, and then just let this guy take his job next year. As the guy we have now is, he's just never developed, never played well either. Chris Austin is really solid. I thought he was going to be hidden, but he's really good. 85 catch, 84 catch in traffic. He's actually solid. And then a 76 overall running back, Nolan George. I don't know why I said it like that, but crazy carrying... Good all-around back. He's kind of a freak. Even the fullbacks is 69 overall. Not bad at all. Team for the last season is pretty much the same. Obviously, the overalls haven't really changed a whole lot. Our sliders are normal rebuild sliders. We're just not winning games as much as we probably should be. The team's great. We got a lot of youth across the board. Nobody's really making themselves a name for themselves, though. Literally outside of Vaughn, but... Obviously, his name's already made. Uh, I, I mean, <laughs> this could just be a complete failure, which wouldn't really be on us, but just the game as usual. Went with the full shebang, though, with the Chiefs. The, you know, the Chiefs playbooks, the West Coast spread, you know, the 4-3 base, all that. Like, everything's the exact same. Just to see if we can actually win with it, because right now we're just getting cocked by Sim. That's all I can really tell you. It's just it's ridiculous. So based on how good our roster is right now, I think this is probably the season we just straight up go broke and can't afford players. But we'll, I suppose, find out. There are some insane names. The number one name, though, obviously, is Kyrie Elam. Is, ooh, yeah. I mean, like I said, I think this is the year. I mean, let's see. So I'd say he's asking for at least this. A six-year 110 is probably fair for him. Uh, Von Miller will probably retire, right? Of course, Blair is a superstar. You want to keep your superstars around. He's a strong safety, though. Uh, honestly, though, the way he's built, getting kind of like Minka Fitzpatrick vibes. We know how much that went for. You know, he went for in there, so maybe underpaid. Uh, George Young, probably a five-year 40, is a pretty young, uh, you know, good player. Young, good overall. Uh, ironically enough, young. Yeah, we get it. Uh, run blocking is awful for Mr. Mark Samuel. Maybe we are just bad, to be fair. Like, our overalls are good, but maybe we just suck. You know, bad run block. It's, I mean, that is a factor, of course. Uh, brackets. Kind of looking like we might not be able to afford uh, Tredavious White. Anyone else? Wa uh, what's his name? Armin Adams. We said, you know, we're fine with letting him go. And we did need a new fullback. Just not quite yet, I guess. So, you know, we kind of jumped the gun, but it's fine. And then Trey White, going to save a little bit of money for going for a two-year, but we're literally right on the line. Although I suppose Allen's number does kind of drop. It goes down three mil, and then it goes down another seven, which is obviously really nice to see. But, you know, Finney is going to be gone. More than likely, Dawkins, you probably have to let go. Taft, you have to resign. But, I mean, we're managing the team about as well as physically possible.
And you got to remember, we're also doing it with quote unquote overpaying. We're paying them more real life contracts rather than in game contracts. It appears they're going to make the playoffs, but honestly, with this good of a team, these playbooks were only 11 and 6. I just get me out of this rebuild, honestly. Like, I don't know what's going on here. Like, this should have been not like a, a quick Super Bowl, but like, we should have been more consistent, you know? At least make it to the championship, make it to the Super Bowl. Not even close. I mean, that's just insane, of course. With the play, Chiefs playbooks, we were number one for yards and number one for yards as a wide receiver with Diggs. Uh, oh, wow. 2,065 yards with 20 touchdowns. Yeah, that's a pretty good season. Some would say that's a, it's a decent year. Uh, sack totals, Von Miller with still 19. Uh, Rousseau with 13.5 at Oliver, 10.5. And Adams with three. I mean, he really shouldn't even be starting. But Taft, five interceptions. Edmonds with four. A couple of guys down the list. Bass with, uh, you know, really good seasons after that contract we gave him. So impressive to see him earn the money. Yearly awards. MVP goes to Mahomes with Allen at number three. And surprisingly, Diggs not even in the top ten. Of course, for Offensive Player of the Year, he's at number six. But that's ridiculous. Vaughn at number three. Rousseau at number 10, George the rookie at 4, uh, and then we got rookie of the year with Wheaton, the number 3 corner, who could replace uh, Tredavious at some point soon. Josh Allen, number 2 for QB, running back number 8, wide receiver, obviously number 1, O-line and number 10. Where's, uh, really? Just, just George Young? Okay. D-line, Von Miller at 3, Rousseau at 7, linebacker not, uh, number 10, actually. Taft at number two for DB with Wheaton at number eight. And then Kicker at number three. A decent year, but once again, with how good we are, with the playbooks we have, we probably should be doing even better. But regardless, going against the division rival Patriots for a chance to be really disappointed, to be honest. That's kind of the biggest chance. Going to the end of the game, let's see if we can... Win and maybe even get to the championship and or Super Bowl. Not looking super strong, but 10 to 3. Still 10 to 3. 13 to 3. 20 to 3. Defense is actually kind of showing up. 20 to 6. And despite the talent we have on offense, still not a crazy game for the offensive numbers. 30 points despite the lockdown on defense. I mean, we should have done better, but still, Allen did all right. Cook, uh, you know, yards per carry were pretty solid. A lot of different running backs got involved, though, or people got involved in the running game, I should say. Sacks, Von Miller with his worst playoff performance in years was still got a sack. Uh, Elam with a pick, and that's pretty much it. Divisional round, gun against the Browns, 8-9. and nine. Love to see them still in it, despite the fact that they're 8-9. and nine. Oh, man. Good overall team making it at 8-9 is like the worst thing possible. Of course, the winner of this game plays either the Jets or the Chiefs. I wonder who that's going to be. 7-all, 10-7. Defense is trying its best. Offense is just really, once again, not playing up to standards. Well, actually, at this point, these are the standards. But 23-7, 23-13, and there you go with another 30-point performance. A little bit of extra on the top, kind of running it up a little bit, but... We win the game, and we're headed to the championship round against, once again, I mean, who knows? But, uh, of course, Josh Allen, really good performance, finally. Uh, the running backs, Cook was great. George was awful. Uh, wide receivers, Gabriel Davis was decent with two touchdowns. Sacks, Miles Garrett went off with four sacks. Von Miller, obviously, involved again, but minimally with one pick, yeah, or sack again, and then Wheaton with a pick. Kicking Joey Slide didn't really matter too much, but yeah, 37 to 13 going up against a team in the championship round. Which team? I don't know. We'll find out. Look at that upgrade. Speed and Excel. That's freakly good. This guy is insane. We actually drafted probably the greatest uh rookie safety I've ever seen. X Factor 6'4, 21 years old. That's hard to beat. Can't remember what his hit power is, but I thought it was in the 80s. Oh, the Chiefs. Jets lost to them? How? It's possible. 95 overall versus 95 overall. The Titan matchup. You're like, it's not the Titans, the Chiefs. <laughs> Don't. Of course, a snowy game. I mean, it's not really a home field advantage for the Chiefs, to be honest. But 0-0, zero to zero, let's see who handles it better anyways. 3-0, to zero, the Chiefs driving down. They get three themselves. So far, both teams looking pretty slow. 10 all again at halftime. 
Driving down, getting three. This is a fair matchup, in fairness. You know, both teams are very similarly matched up. Same playbooks and everything. 20 to 24. 31 yard line. I'm going to be honest. I think this is a loss. Second and 10. I want to come in because it just seems like these kind of yards are just guaranteed. We're going to bring the house, as you really have no choice at this point. And Blair, not going to get it. And sacked, believe it or not, by Finney. Once again, I'm kind of getting sick of seeing this team suck, so I'm out here. I don't care. Is that Von Miller? That's Finney. Okay, that makes sense, actually. Uh, George on the return. <laughs> wow, that's really bad blocking. Holy crap, but to the 21. Also, it seems kind of illegal that we're wearing uh, white in the snow game. Can't tell who this is benefiting, but somebody is the answer, I suppose. And there's really no one open, but Gabriel Davis is going to get enough, and he is going to start Dustin. Dustin Mofo. Is that uh, Bolton who was like a superstar slash X Factor? Gabriel Davis on the slant. Just kind of want to block from James Cook, who looks pretty sick at number 28, to be honest. Gabriel Davis again. Good throw while pressured. Slips off. Own guy gets hit. Out of bounds of the 20. What a game. Oh, my God. Do you see Josh Allen's completion percentage? Under 50%. Is this guy feeling it? Feeling the pressure being released. Oh, what? Where's my run call? It's all right, though, as Dawson Knox is going to get it down to the 7, maybe the 6. I feel like I'm kind of cheating by playing so much, but I also kind of want to just play with the team a little bit, and that's weird to say it that way. Losing a bunch of yards, but getting an 11-yard touchdown. Putting the team up by 3 the refs deciding they wanted to start playing the game a little bit. And with that sack by Von Miller, the team's going to be in a pretty tough spot. The Chiefs being the team. Adams is awful, so I will user him. You know, awful, usering awful has got to mean good, clearly. Although we just forced uh, him to move because we just made a crazy play on the double team. And this, they kind of have to. I was about to say, you kind of have to call a timeout. You have no choice. Fourth and short, you can't just run it, right? Like you gotta, you gotta do something. Don't know what they're gonna do here, but I suppose the boundaries would make sense. You don't really care if they get the first down as long as they're not. Oh, damn it, I'm Finney. And yeah, okay, that was interesting, but yeah, that's all right because we're headed to the Super Bowl. Suck all of the knobs. You can suck them all. Of course, looking at the performance, obviously we helped Josh Allen, but he didn't throw two interceptions, right? Bleach percentage sucks, but he also didn't throw two interceptions. Uh, you know, they didn't really do anything on the ground. Nobody really did, but, you know, 6.0, 4.5, but kind of lucky probably. Rudy Bins, Gabriel Davis obviously was great because of us. Outside of that, though, the team really sucked on offense at it yet again. But look at who. Von Miller coming up big. Obviously, Rousseau and Ed Oliver are kind of getting, you know, overshadowed by how good he is. But Wheaton, another pick. Is that two or three now? Edmonds with a, a pick, blocked kick by Bass or from Bass, which literally could have lost the game. Love it. Super Bowl time. I have no idea who it's going to be against. The Giants are kind of juiced in game, to be honest. But let's see what happens. Dev ups, none. I can't really remember any being on offense. That would have been fair defensively. Cruz goes up, which is pretty clutch. And I'm pretty sure that's it. But at this point, our team is so good. There's not really that many you know, chances to dev up, if you will. So, I mean, what do you really expect? Uh, you know, I don't even know how Cruz is performing. Oh, he's a pass rusher. That's co pretty cool. <laughs> but either way, let's go up against these Giants and win or lose, finish this rebuild, this this godforsaken rebuild. Hardman is one of their wide receivers. He yeah, was actually very, you know, tempting early on, but decided didn't really need him and... Ultimately, I mean, overall-wise, we were probably right, but without the Chiefs' playbooks, we potentially would have missed the playoffs back-to-back -back years, which is great. 7-0, 14-0, the Giants kind of reeling here a bit. 14-7, nice resilience by them to you know, tie the game up, apparently. Okay, finally putting some points back up on the board, 21-14. A field goal or something would have won the game there, most likely, but instead... The Giants are going to get a chance, but they don't get it. I mean, I don't want to play it for them, but at the same time, 45 seconds, two timeouts with the Bills. That's a bit of fun. That's a bit of fun. Wow, Diggs kind of got locked. 
That's, yeah. I mean, oh well. Bass needs the 42-yard line. We're going to get you that 42-yard line, buddy. Well, I mean, hopefully. <laughs> I don't know, actually. Got to be honest. Diggs really kind of got smoked last time, but we'll see what happens here. He has that inside leverage, but not as good as Knox, who's going to get quite a bit to the 38. That was kind of weird the way he ran, but that was kind of fun at the same time. Fun and weird. It's like a night with your mother. Uh, let's go deep. Screw it. What a throw. Diggs. Touchdown, Bills. What a dot. Oh, my. Like, honestly, if, like, if Mahomes and Allen, which they probably will be, are built like this next Madden, uh, like, they should just not even exist in franchise. Like, how is that even fair, dude? From his own 24, call it 25, down to the freaking 8, dude. Like, come on. How is that fair? It's so fun, though. <laughs> Three timeouts. The Giants still have a chance. Are they actually, did they call it? I want to come in and watch. Of course, this is more realistic. We should probably... Probably should have just came in, but, you know, fair enough. We're here now at Oliver. Chance to break through. Not really doing a great job of it. Rolling out. The ball's going to get there. And he caught it. McCall Hardman caught it. That is the craziest play in Super Bowl history. It beats everything. Hands down, obviously. I mean, I don't know why I'm even saying it. Like, it literally beats. I'm thinking of all the Super Bowl plays. Nothing beats that. Although, I, well, he wasn't the first one to touch it, though. Look at Hardman. Oh, my God. Literally the play of the Super Bowl history. I mean, that's literally insane. I can't even be mad. It's actually that crazy. Imagine the miss. That's actually insane. I can't be mad. I like. I just. I'm here. I'm existing, and that's nuts. That is actually crazy. Of course, it would have to happen to us, obviously. But oh my, the Bills win the toss. Imagine winning, anyways. It'd be like, wow, that was useless. Like if the Giants win, that's the greatest play ever in in history of the sport, let alone Super Bowl. Obviously, if they don't win, it, it may get knocked down a couple. It, it, you know, winning does kind of matter when you're talking about greatest plays ever, and especially importance, right? Really bad start. Oh, my God. I don't want to – like, I want to go for it, but obviously not getting it would be a loss. Still think it's a loss anyways. I mean, look like they're literally about to score in 2.2 seconds. Let's come in. I mean, it's, it's pretty much over, but oh, well. I mean, you just can't go backwards in the freaking overtime, dude. And there's literally no one there. Tremaine Edmonds does enough. How is the momentum in our side at all? Uh, I mean, at this point, you pretty much have to go goal line because it's not even about just stopping the first down. It's also about not giving them any yards in general. Like, you know, the yards, they're getting so close. Run commit. And he's going to be short. It's not a likely chance to stop him, but... Oh, they're going to go for it. That makes sense. I would also go for it here. I would you'd be dumb not to, I think. Idiots, dude. No way you got it. <laughs> what is even this rebuild, dude? I get it. It's a 50-some yard field goal, but you obviously take it. What, a 51-yarder? You're taking every day of the week, obviously. On the run, digs. Not a great play. Oh, my. He's jukebox. That's or something. He's got one of those things. He's got one of the things that really isn't fair, to be honest. That's all I can tell you. Gabriel Davis. That's a That's a route. Dawson Knox is probably the freakiest of the athletes, considering, you know, he's a tight end doing what he's doing, but you think I would like Diggs even more? I had him, too. Look at Allen, dude. How is that fair, dude? It's actually busted. Let's just watch the AI finish it out. It's fun playing with the team, but... Oh, what the hell is going on here? Whatever, I guess. Maybe we're going to go and win it. I mean, we kind of have them. Down to the five to four. Dotting up. This team's too busted. How is this team not winning many, many Super Bowls? I don't know what to tell you. 
field goal for the win. We, we got the Super Bowl win. Super legit, right? I mean, yeah, dude. Super legit, obviously. That's insane how good that team is, specifically on offense. Fourth and inches, 51-yard field goal on the line, and you go for it. Yikes. Especially when you failed on third and inches. But regardless, the Bills are Super Bowl champions of the world. Bills fans are like, please don't take this long. <laughs> Just don't. But obviously, Von Miller, absolutely insane. This one, Kyrie Elam was pretty decent. Uh, what else? Gabriel Davis, you know, stepped up to the, the, the sh- what is it, uh, the occasion. That's the one. James Cook, really good in the postseason. Maybe not so great in the regular season, but pretty damn good yards per carry in the postseason. Uh, Dawson Knox, he was up and down throughout this thing. Same with Josh Allen, to be honest. But regardless, the team is one, and Von Miller is literally indestructible. He will not retire ever. Josh Allen with three touchdowns, zero picks. We almost lost a game to whoever this is who threw two picks. Nice. Of course, I talk about James Cook's yards per carry, and he was awful. Saquon Barkley back on top of his game. Pretty good stuff. Receiving 10 for 166 for Diggs with two touchdowns. Obviously, we pretty much gave him half of that in one throw. Uh, Sack totals Vaughn. He got a half. He, you know, he participated Wheaton and Edmonds, again, the dynamic duo with two interceptions and Bass missing a field goal. What a disaster. We'll take a look at the team and pretty much head out of here for a successful rebuild. I don't know, dude. (laughs) It's a success for me because I'm dead tired and I want to freaking sleep. But obviously, uh, you know, this was a bit of a long one, despite the fact that, once again, we were probably set up to win it within the first three seasons minimum show you guys we didn't like reset or force win but honestly if you have the chiefs playbooks on and their scheme you're basically force winning anyways don't let anyone else tell you on the platform i don't care what anyone says but let's take a look at the team before we head out josh allen 99 overall 30 years old accuracies are still lacking a little bit but obviously when you're in the 90s that's all that matters 96 under pressure 99 throw power 98 break sack I also don't imagine his speed or excel was 90 or 91. I'd imagine he starts a little bit lower than that. So that's pretty busted as well. Uh, What else do we have? Uh, Running back James Cook. I doubt he would have developed the trucking ability. The edge loves elusive upgrades. And yeah, you can see there. Although I will say for this team, I feel like that's probably the best thing, right? Because you got Josh Allen to be the power man with James Cook being super slippery and big play potential like. Stephon Diggs, who's just an absolute insano man. And also has jukebox or evasive, whatever. One of them, obviously. Gabriel Davis. Thought his short route would have been better than that because he kind of seemed like he was killing in the short route. But obviously he's a route running guru with some really strong hands. Uh, What else? Dawson Knox. I'd imagine he's like a freaking burner with great route running. 96 medium route with just good enough catching. Obviously 93 catching, 88 catching traffic. Speed's great. O-line. I guess we'll take a look at Deion Dawkins. He, you would assume, would be the most balanced around player obviously great pass blocking run blocking not so much of course mark samuel he knows all about that with his 64 run block and the rest isn't much better but i suppose this team is built to put up like 6k passing yards like look at how good the passing ratings are or pass block ratings are for this offensive line it's crazy which i mean it didn't really reflect that because our pass game was pretty tame considering the talent we have once again All across the board, all pass block gods. Uh, Tremaine Edmonds, you know, we got a couple of decent upgrades for him over time. Coverage got up there. Man coverage never did, but he's a beast. And, of course, he's huge, as we know. Uh, Jarvante Finney, great block shed. Okay zone coverage and all that, but he's a freak with the run, you know, zone coverage. And we just looked at Cruz, who's apparently an edge rusher. (laughs) Taft, who's, once again, just freakly good. Uh, I guess his hit power wasn't in the 80s, but insane zone coverage, fast, decent, well, not even decent, good catching, and of course, huge, and he's still young. J.J. Blair, 91 zone, slower developing, even though, uh, well, I guess he didn't start. He's also had to sit back up. Kyrie Elam, 94 uh, overall, should be like pretty much all man coverage, right? 81 zone, probably because he's maxed on man, is he? Actually, can't be. I think you have to literally be a 99 overall to be maxed at any of the archetypes. Uh, Russo, very, very good across the board, uh, especially since, well, I guess I wouldn't say especially since, but 
can't really tell because we have Vaughn, but I'd imagine he'd be good without him because we've had it in the past where one guy does really well and the other just never does well. Vaughn Miller, still good. Still good. He's insane. Tredavious White, of course, great across the board. And then special teamers will take a look at a Matariza because obviously he's kind of like a fun name. 97 kick power, 81 accuracy. And then before we physically go, I want to see if Vaughn sticks around another season or not. Once again, I was tempting on changing uh, his ratings and, you know, keeping him around longer. But I was like, you know what? He's actually not regressing that hard. Let him die out the way he wants to die out. But I want to see if he actually officially has retired on top as a Super Bowl champion again. Or if he's still around. Of course, he, Derrick Henry's... Uh, wow, he's still here. Okay, he's 37 as an edge rusher. That's that's great. Mitch Morse finally retired. A little surprised he wouldn't have gone sooner. Aaron Donald retires. Treader, Bakhtiari, Cameron Hayward, Casey Hayward, uh, Zach Martin. Dante Hightower is still here? Jesus. But let's take a look at Vaughn. I, I mean, I'm just at this point, I'm just curious. I'm just curious to see how good he is. Is he just like so good that he can't retire because his ratings are like bugged in? Like, what? Like, cause look, he's like an 85 overall. He was an 86 last season after regressions. He's a freak. His speed and excel is great still. 86 finesse, 89 power. His block shed hasn't gone down once. He might have actually been glitched to where he literally can't retire, which is insane. But regardless, enough of that. Unlike Von Miller, it does have to come to an end. If you guys enjoyed, maybe leave a like, maybe subscribe if you're new. Follow me on Twitter, Jumpy Care, second channel, Pierre Care Plays for non Madden videos. And if you have an idea for a you know, rebuild you'd like to see next, let me know in the comment section below. I'd say Thursday would be our rebuild of the perfect fantasy draft team. It's probably more of a how quick can we win a Super Bowl and maybe how many rather than will we like this one. Uh, but that's about it. Thanks for watching. Hope you guys come back for the next video. But until the next video, see ya.